to Lucky, the Spikes defeat the Panthers. While Mark and Phil doubt the Second Legion of Augusta ever possessed the cauldron, back in Evertown, little Martha notices two doves and a tree drawn on the map. For Aaliyah, this is a striking image and a possible clue. A strange dream upsets Armand Aaliyah, but the tycoon grows even more disturbed when the map from the torch is stolen, only to be photographed. Who's after the map? Who's anticipating their every move? These questions will haunt Grace and help sow the seeds of doubt. And it's clear that for the Vikings, the British Isles were a good springboard for their travels in search of a new land to colonize. A green earth, Groenland. According to some scholars, they reached America 500 years before Columbus. According to another legend, however, the first person to set foot on the American continent was an Irish monk in the 6th century, Saint Brendan. He went in search of a paradise on Earth, but perhaps he merely discovered America. But, like I always remind you, post-Roman Britain is a collection of legends stitched together five centuries later. Of course, those Irish monks were seasoned travelers, that's why they founded monasteries all over the world. Including Italy, right, Professor Ball? That's right. For example, your country was the destination of St. Columbanus, also an Irishman, who took the old Roman roads across the Alps and arrived at a place called Bobbio, where he founded a famous monastery. In short, the Vikings had the compass, but we Celts were able to discover America without the bloody thing. Maybe your Brenda or Columbia or whatever his name was had a navigation system hidden on the boat. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What a fascinating hypothesis, Miss... Uh... Bradford. Susan Bradford. <laughs> We have no evidence that the Celts had their own primitive GPS system, but perhaps something a bit more physical was employed. For example, I trust my rheumatic aches and pains. Now, do you see this big toe? When it starts to hurt, I believe it's warning me. Vincent, you're beyond 75 degrees longitude north. Sort of like a built-in GPS. Interesting, Grace. Very interesting. Yeah, and Professor Ball has spoken about headaches whenever he goes to Stonehenge. I was referring to the Viking compass, Lucky. If it was indeed capable of indicating an object's location using special magnetic properties, perhaps it could also help us find out where the Cauldron of Olympia is. I mean, from what we know about the Cauldron, I'd hardly call it a normal object. But we can't just go to the museum's director and ask him to lend us the compass. And stealing it wouldn't exactly be sportsmanlike, would it? Well, first things first. It might be helpful to gather all the information we can about the compass. Sure, I suppose we could do that, but if I go ask Redgrave for another field trip permit, she'll skin me alive. Yikes! Speaking of class trips, I completely forgot about the workout today. See ya! I'm here! Are you guys ready? Actually, we're almost finished. Huh? Thanks. So, 
Anyone happen to need a break? For us or for you? <sighs> right on time and in impeccable physical shape. A model coach indeed. Come on, put one knee pad around your forearms so they're held together. Good, now Susan, dribble in position three. Receivers, your goal is to put seven out of 10 balls on Susan's head. If you don't make it, you'll have to start again. Susan has to dribble 10 balls and put five in the baskets, or she'll have to start all over. Wrists facing down when the ball arrives. Ready to receive. Shoulders back and flexible. Move those feet. Follow the trajectory of the server's hand. Anticipate the trajectory. Follow the ball from outside to inside. Go for one. One for two. Yeah! Six out of seven. Zero. Seven out of nine. Zero. Start again. But it was good, Lucky. I must have jumped three meters. Come on, let's move back. Lucky, for Pete's sake, we're tired. We're lousy, because if you haven't noticed, we're pooped, Coach. Come on, Lucky, you'll see. We'll do great in that match. You reap the benefits of training when you play the game. If you train poorly, then you'll play poorly. And when you play against the Italian team, they won't be nearly as forgiving as I am. Considering Susan saved you on the last ball. Oh, whatever. Well, we might as well prepare for the worst. Okay, girls, we're going to do sit-ups. Three sets of 30 after we do this. <laughs> Share the load, all together to get better. Shower time. The Spike Team wins three sets to zero today. Everything is on the house, but just for today, okay? You better not betray us, Vito. We don't want to see you always cheering for your beloved Italy, right? Just for today, Vito. That's just crazy talk. I'd be perfectly fine with an Italian uh, uh, loss. Anyway, uh, go, go, Spikes! <laughs> Martha, really, as I was saying, if my Susie conveys the ancient Indian meditation techniques I taught her to the other girls, I'm sure they'd all benefit from the spirituality. Uh -huh. Erica Topi, Little Miss Flirt. Who does she think she is? Man, concentrate on the game. You just have to make sure the impression of the ball ends up stamped all over her beautiful face. We're playing against the best team in the tournament. Remember what we huh? said in the locker room. Play without fear. Just summon up all the determination you have in your body. Remember technique. Have fun, but be aggressive. Exploit the strengths of your fellow teammates. Remember, there's no I in team. Be a team! One, two, three, four, five! Yeah! Kids, see, race, crash, cover, lock, and then victory's ours! <laughs> it's been a long time. Meet again. I'm honored. Good luck. playing against a world champion team, but come on! 
This was our moment to prove we were right there with them. You've got eyes like boiled fish. You move like sloths. I want to see the eyes of the tiger out there. Keep your eyes on the ball. You can Focus do better, girls. Just play like you would if this I were a workout. Never mind the boy in the stands. Yeah. Hmm. Susan, I had a single blocker. Listen up, girls! Just awesome, isn't it? Huh? have we here? An injury under the ankle bone? Is that it? It's nothing. Only a slight sprain. You'll just have to clench your teeth and play through it. Grin and bear it. Ouch! Ow! It still hurts! I'm sure it does, but the game's not over yet. <sighs> Patty will grit her teeth and fight through the pain. <sighs> here they come. Stretcher's back in. She needs one. Receptions! Oh. Just the short ones, Patty. Oh. Susan, the only way to win is to attack. Ah. <gasps> ah. Susan! Who do you what? think you're, you're fooling not me for this? No, it's not! What's the matter with you girls? Why don't you ask the ones making goo-goo eyes at the boys in the stands instead of the ones who are actually out there playing? I'm exercising my peripheral vision. All you do is scowl and give everyone girls, dirty looks. Girls, girls, what is this? Have you lost your minds? Problems can be solved when you face them together as a team. And when you're losing, I expect you to play with dignity right down to the very last point. Now go back out there and think about the game for a change. I can live with a defeat. That's not the problem. What I saw out there tonight wasn't a team. And above all, it wasn't my team. I have nothing else to say. What's the feeling in here? Ah, okay, I got it. Lessons, trips, visits to museums, and boyfriends. They've been preoccupied with so much lately. I guess I'd be asking too much if I expect my team to focus on the tournament for a change. Mr. Lucky, I expect to see you in my office. Yes, sir. I'll be there in a minute. Now. Oh. Your team just put on an intolerable spectacle. Other teams have lost, but no team has ever behaved so poorly or been such an embarrassment as yours. You may have just tarnished the prestige of our tournament. Do I have to remind you of all the teams that were watching your little sideshow out there? Look, the girls are under a lot of pressure. It's their first international tournament, but between the classes and all those field trips they've been on... Yes, you're quite right. You are here to participate in a tournament, not to go gallivanting all over England on field trips. I'm going to speak with Redgrave about this. Hey, wait a minute. Don't do anything rash just because- Mr. Lucky, this is not some rinky-dink college in the suburbs. If you think you're free to do what you like here, you're wrong. 
If you have anything further to add, you're entitled to it. But if I were you, I would avoid taking this conversation down a very dark and lonely path. I offer my apologies, Lord Coldwater. You can be assured our college in the suburbs will not embarrass your prestigious tournament any longer. Don't forget that your college is the one that's scheduled to light the Olympic flame. Let's hope that you can prove that you're worthy of the honor. Everything okay? Oh, sorry, Priscilla. My head's elsewhere. If I can help alleviate oh. the stress, you just have to let me. Everything is fine, Miss Gray. Just a friendly exchange of opinions, that's all. <laughs> that woman is just pure evil. Hmm. So what did Coldwater want? There is more traffic here than at Piccadilly Circus. You're so curious, you're starting to get paranoid. Come on, let's get moving. We have to check in with Evertown. So, Boyd, how are you doing this year? Your name comes up quite a bit here among the faculty. You've proven to be a moderate success. You've matured. You certainly seem to be excelling at rugby. I hope that your studies are going equally as well. Well, I, uh, I, uh, do my best, sir. I also know that many young girls seem to find you interesting. Like that little blonde one from Spikersfield. What's her name? Susan? Well, it's nothing really serious, sir. There's nothing wrong, Boyd. But if I had to guess why the young lady seems so distracted lately, I would bet on you. Huh? You know, I just had an intriguing idea. I might see fit to promote you to the captain of the rugby team. What's that? Captain? Relax, my boy. I don't want to put any undue pressure on you. And please, do let me know how it goes with the blonde. Here, amaze your prey with a few literary quotes. Girls melt for this sort of thing. The Mists of Avalon? Such long faces. Cheer up, ladies. It was just a bad day. I'm sure the next game will be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 don't worry. We'll fix this. Hey, Beth, another game this bad, and I'll transform your room into a giant walking closet. Don't you dare, Adam. You so much as even touch one comic book in my room, and you'll see what happens. Did you know that Professor Ball has singled Beth out for praise? <laughs> Not really. I just brought a DVD of King Arthur. The professor took the opportunity to speak about Merlin, Morgana, the Knights of the Round Table. The professor is amazing, especially when he rambles on about those old legends. He actually suggested we take a trip to Carleon. Carleon? That's right. Many scholars think that Camelot was founded right there. Hmm. Don't say a word, Armand. I've already applied for a visit to Stonehenge. Hattie was so enthusiastic about it. I've asked Ms. Retrave for the permit. Stonehenge is a magical place and full of energy. It may even help you rediscover your enthusiasm. You did well, Grace. Oh, by the way, Grace, where are Susan, Patty, and the boys? Well, I don't know where all the boys went. They're probably with Lucky. But Susan told me to send you her regards. She had to write an essay, while Patty, on the other hand... And since bad luck never travels alone, Brent, those girls have even started to call me Miss Stretcher. <laughs> no, don't tell me that you hurt yourself. You're hopeless. Laugh all you want, you big bully. Go ahead. It's just a sprained ankle, but I kept playing, and I'll be in much better shape for the next game. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, in great shape for a new accident. Did you finish the game in a full body cast? Ha, ha, ha. No, I was just stepping back into defense, and I ended up smacking into Anne Mary's foot. Today must have been a nightmare for you. How did the rest of the team handle it? Meh. We had a video call scheduled with Evertown tonight. Hmm. I'm sure they're all being pampered by their friends and relatives right now. What about you? Why aren't you getting comforted by Mummy and Daddy with the rest of the team? I lost my mother when I was seven. And my father is always out of town working. <gasps> Bummer. I'm so sorry, Patty. I'm such an idiot. I just wanted to make you smile. Well, we might be going to Stonehenge. I wanted to see this place that means so much to you. And if you were there, it would certainly be an excellent opportunity <laughs> to see me smile. Stonehenge, huh? Well, this is it. Take a look. Oh. Did you hear what I said? Sh sure, I... 
I'll do everything I can to be there, Patty. Mind, forget it. Hmm. Beautiful day, isn't it? I don't know you anymore. The Anne Mary I like is more than lipstick or a nice dress. What about the Anne Mary that I like, Julio? Wouldn't you appreciate me anyway? Hmm. It was just a girl, the one who wanted to give me her number. What did you want me to do? Send her away? Treat her badly? Humiliate her? Just say no? Uh, yes. You think so, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> oh. You know, and maybe I, uh, uh, sorry. I talk too much, right? No, Susan, I really like listening to you. You make me laugh. Uh, thanks. That was a compliment, right? Gee, I guess I, I really like you too. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I really like hanging out with you and stuff, and well, I feel like I can talk to you about anything. Oh, yeah, of course. Same here. <laughs> If sin is the price of the bond between us, life after life, then I will sin with joy always to come back to you, my beloved. You huh? like it? I know you're passionate about literature. Me? Oh, yes, yes, very passionate. And it was spoken beautifully. Whatever the heck it was. No one extinguishes the fire of loyalty that burns in you and keeps burning, safe in the high temple of every trial. A rebellion in Thessaloniki, the flame hath been dormant under the ashes of the penitent and the seal of the immortal shining. Wow, I love what you quoted. But what do all those verses mean? It's kind of poetry. But it's also a puzzle we're trying to help our teacher, Ms. Lawton, solve. No success yet, though. A riddle? Can I copy it? Maybe I could try. Uh, sh sure you can. That's right. But first... Huh? Whoa. <laughs> Back in Evertown, Aaliyah is busy interpreting Mathena's song. Meanwhile, in England, Grace isn't sure who she can trust. Unprepared to face the Chinese team, Lucky will see his team disintegrate into fights and jealousy. Stonehenge may hold a clue, but somebody in the darkness will anticipate their every move.